hi guys welcome to africa hsa channel my name is adeboe sodek and i'm here to address the health and safety issues that are affecting africa in general you know africa is our motherland right do you know that 2.3 million women and men that go to work every day fall victim of work-related accidents or disease every year about 340 million accidents which we have 160 million people are victims of work-related illness. Imagine, we are having 1.1 million deaths that exceed the average death from the road accidents, which is 999,000 of our loved ones that we lost to road accidents. We lose 502,000 of our loved ones to war, 563,000 of our loved ones to violence and 312,000 to HIV AIDS and the Oga Kwata Kwata of them all which is the biggest 25.8 million of our loved ones are battling coronavirus which 17.1 million have been recovered and 859,000 we lost to coronavirus as at August 31st, 2020. Now you can see why we need to address this issue of health, safety, and our environment in Africa. Standing before you as an Ebola Certified Health and Safety Officer from UK, the head office is in Leicester City. I am a Health Certified International Occupational Safety and Health, Diploma in Fire Engineering and Safety Management, Diploma in Electrical Installation, Positive Health and Safety Culture, Benefit of British Safety Council in the UAE. I'm also an International Standardization Organization Certified, which everyone knows as ISO 45001, as a lead auditor. I possess a master's degree in Operation Management from Himalayan University and other security personnel from city and guide certificate you see you are in good hands and i'm going to try as much as possible to explain everything to the best of my own ability i'm lucky to be one of the members of the first africa hse organization in the united arab emirates which the head office is in dubai if you like to know more about hse Let's go into the HSC world. Welcome. Uh, you and I both know we are very, very lucky to come from a continent like Africa. We have all sort of mineral resources. We are so blessed with crude oil, gold, silver, wire diamond, black diamond, blue diamond, cobalt, uh, rubber plants, cocoa, and so on and so forth. Name it, count our blessings. But you know what we lack? The health and safety of our environment and ourselves. Because everybody just go to work for working sake. They don't even think about their health. They don't even think about the side effects, the risk associated with their job or the hazard associated with their job. 60% of Africans always have a side also between finishing their secondary school education and joining the university. Within the one year interval that your result is going to come out, most guys go to learn hand trade. We are talking of uh, tailoring, we are talking of mechanics, we are talking of uh, bricklaying, electrician, plumbers, uh, lots of handwork work most of us go to learn. But you know where we are getting it wrong? We learn the work, but we don't learn the risk associated with it that we don't see. We only understand the physical hazard that we see on site. What about the biological hazard that is affecting our health? Can you tell me how many times, you, yeah, I'm talking to you, can you tell me how many times you've gone to a construction site and you step on a three inches to four inches nail? It will enter your shoe, pop out of your leg, then come to the top of the shoe. Can you tell me how many times debris of blocks or bricks are falling on your head while you are on site? 
Can you tell me how many times you've witnessed someone fall from height? Can you tell me how many times you've witnessed a car accident because one driver is using the wrong side of the road? Can you tell me how many times you've lost a loved ones or you got a very, very big scar from work-related incidents and accidents? You see why we need to address this issue? This is why we are going to discuss and analyze the health and safety standards in Africa. And with the introduction, you know me already, I'm also a safety practitioner. And here we'll be talking about what exactly is health and safety and what is occupational health and safety. Types of hazard we have, advantages of occupational health and safety that favors the HS representative, the disadvantages of occupational health and safety that favors HSC representative. And it favors us and it's also a disadvantage. And different types of sectors and where we go wrong. Let's dig in. You know, before anything happened, there will be series of incidents. There will be signs, you know, before things happen. And these signs happen because of the negative culture we have right from childbirth. Because imagine most of Africans, let me say 40 to 30 percent of Africa um, uh, apprentices, they start learning their trade at the age of 15. You see how fast and easy they learn. But after like four to five years when they are graduating, they are bosses, they are very, very happy, everybody is celebrating, but mostly they are always after the money. They get you a very nice toolbox. Yes, it contains all necessary tools you need for your handwork. But have you just think about it? Hello? Think about it. Have you ever seen any of the boss provide you with safety boots, safety harness, hard hats, uh, high visibility jackets? Have you ever seen anyone, be it a plumber, be it carpenter, be it a electrician? Because we do most work at height, right? Because you have to fix lights up. You have to do plastering on second, third, fifth, tenth floor. You have to work at height. Have you ever seen anyone? Now you understand, this has been a negative culture that has been passed down from generation to generation. From our boss from the person who teach us to our own turn, then we as well, we are going to pass it to the next uh, generation coming ahead. This is a negative culture which we have to eradicate. And mostly when we go to sites, we have cuts and bruises. You know why? Because we don't understand that all these things are not a normal way of living. We see it as a normal way of life. Now you understand my point. Because when people go to site, you know, when they use this, uh, the binding wire to hold together maybe wood or scaffold or uh, andrel. You see, for a wise man, after putting the binding wire, they have to cut it short, then bend it so it does not... Uh, poncho or give you bruise. But can you count how many times this has injured you on site? Can you count how many times you are working the welder after they finish their work instead of them make ensure that they grind that joint very smooth? They just leave it and move on to the next job. I uh, will come back to it. But within the minutes of you coming back, do you know how many people have gotten cuts on their leg or by their side? or sometimes on their head, if it's at the height of the head. So now you understand what cuts and bruises. Then, after that, near misses start happening. Tell me how many times you have been to sites, large sites, small sites, construction, that you find armor falling from heights. Then boom, by your side. How many times have you found debris 
when they are plastering uh, the wall, fall from height. How many times have a uh, headpan fall from height and shovel? Can you count how many times? Now you understand why we need to address this issue. If you want to know what objects falling from height does to a human being, get a uh, watermelon, go six feet, just uh, drop a hammer on the watermelon from six feet, then go up to eight feet because the watermelon it's like a human head. Then go to 12 feet, 15 feet, and look at the impact of how that hammer is going to penetrate the watermelon. But because that's a watermelon, it's not going to shout, it's not going to complain. But imagine a human. So, how do you expect him or her to feel? That is why you need to go in a construction site or anywhere construction is going on with your full body harness from the hard hat to your visibility jacket to your safety boots to your cover roll most of us working in the company factories production plants this is why you is better for you to use a cover roll and you zip up than using a cloth that is dangling that is you know just moving from one place to another because so many people die from entanglement of your clothes to the machine. The machine will just grip you, pim, collapse. The next thing we are going to see hand product finished. Human being is already, you know, is squashed flat like meat. This happened in lots of uh, 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 poultry farm industries where they kill lots of cows every day. Because people only know that job by doing it every day because they feel it's normal, but they don't understand the risk associated with that job. This is where the fatal injury come in. When things like this happen, someone falls from height. All you hear, all you hear under five seconds is, ah, boom, colors. That's gone. When the machine gets hold of you, all you say is, hey, before you know it, boom, end product. The only thing you hear on the highway is bars, colors. People are dead. So tell me, when you are dead, who's going to take care of your family? Who will take care of your wife? Who will pay your children's school fees? Who is going to send money to your mother and your father? Tell me when you are dead. When you lose your hand, who's going to take care of your family? When you lose your eyesight, how will a contract be awarded to you for you to uh, get money and take care of your family? When you have cancer, how are you going to save enough money to send your children to the higher institution, to better places where you cannot reach, where your parents, the level of uh, the training your parents give to you, you want your children to be better than that. But after you get cancer, you use money for chemotherapy. How are you going to take care of your family when you are dead or when you already got both of your hands amputated or your legs amputated? Now you understand why this is happening. Then, if we have to eradicate all this, we have to use the PDCA cycle, which is the Plan, Do, Check, Act cycle. This always we need. You know, I will tell you something I know you are going to love. If you meet a girl you like for the first time, you find her in your neighborhood, she's just walking around, you see her the first time, you see her the second time, you'll be like, hey, bro, who's this girl? I'm just seeing her in this neighborhood. I didn't know. I tell you, yes, her name is so, 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 so. Their family is nice. They just moved in about a week or two ago. You say, wow, and I like that girl. You see, because you're already planning to create something, having a relationship, this is the same thing that happened when you are about to execute the work, either on the construction site or in a factory, or you are building anything. First, you do the soil test, which is like the question you are asking your friends that are about their family, or who that girl is. If it's type A, type B, or type C. So you know the way you are going to get start excavating. You know the kind of slope you are going to use for the excavation. Then, you plan on meeting R, which means you are doing that. That means... 
where you meet, ah, okay, you start introducing yourself. My name is this. You already challenged yourself from the plan that you are doing. My name is this. I'd like to be in a relationship with you, you know? You are a womanizer, I know. Now you start laughing. Then she tell you, okay, I'm going to get back to you. After two, three, four days, you didn't hear from her, you have to check in because you have a mobile number, right? This is the same thing that happened on the construction site. After you know the type of uh, soil, then you have to check for underground services. Maybe there is a pipeline, maybe there is water pipe, maybe uh, that place has been used for dumping of, uh, of hazardous uh, refuse. Maybe there is life electrical uh, cable going underneath. After you've checked those, then excavation can begin. Then now, your relationship, now you start checking in to the extent that even if your mom calls you, can you please, Junior, can you please go and mop uh, the ground? Or Sadiq, can you please go and mop this? No. You tell them, okay, you take the mop, but because you are receiving a call, you place your leg on the wall, put the mop between your legs. Instead of you to use the mop to clean the ground, then you start chatting and talking and talking. Then you start acting according to her, planning on where to meet her, and so on and so forth. This is when lots of things happen. So when you know the kind of soil you are dealing with, the kind of underground lay you are dealing with, then you have to know the kind of shoring, the kind of bending, the kind of uh, things you are going to use for the excavation, how deep it's going to go, how wide it's going to be due to the soil type. But this issue will go, is going to be for another day. Then you review an update. Okay, after you meet the girl, the girl told you, I don't like the way uh, you dress in a uh, native way or in a uh, English way. I like you to, I need you to dress more professional in suit and shirt. That is review. Then you also, you tell her, okay, I love the way you walk and everything, but I like to see you on high heels, you know? I like to see you on gown. Or, you know, for those of us that love bump shots, mm, you're a womanizer. Hello? Yeah. Then you start purchasing all these things for her. You are trying to review and update her. You as well, you are reviewing and updating yourself because this is what you want. Same thing you have to do when you are in a construction site because this is what the contractor wants. That was why they awarded you the contract. So we are going to go straight to what exactly is health and safety you know first of all what is health when you wake up in the morning you raise your hand you raise your leg in my language they say something like modupa oluwa mojila roy mogbo wo shegbe mogbe ese o shegbe molaju mi o shela mo soro o mo jade oluwa so meaning God, I thank you. I woke up this morning, I raised up my hand, it's working. I raised my leg, it's working. I can open my eyes, I can see clearly, and my voice are coming out. Thank you very much, God. When there is protection of your body and mind, you are okay, you don't have any problem. This exactly is what is called health. No issues with you. And safety is the absence of danger, which means you go to work, you come back, there is no uh, danger at work, either from the road or from your workplace or in your room or anything. Nothing is affecting you. But what we know as occupational health and safety is the protection of people and the absence of danger of physical harm or ill health to person. Extending in the workplace only. Workplace. That is why it's called occupational. You know meaning of occupation, right? Occupation is your job. So occupational health and safety. The safety and health of your job. The risk associated and the hazard associated with that's your job. When you are free from those risks and hazard, that is when you say we are um, you're having an occupational health and safety in a good way. Now we move to types of hazard. There are six types of hazard, which we have uh, biological hazard, we have the chemical hazard, 
we have the physical hazard, we have the safety hazard, we have the agronomic hazard, which I love the most because this is what affects us mostly in Africa. And psychosocial hazard, this also as well is in the old world. But you know, for Africans, hmm, you guys are the pata pata of them all. You are the general overseer of them all when it comes to psychosocial hazard. What are biological hazard? Biological hazard start from viruses. You see, coronavirus, bacteria, insect bites that leads to malaria, dog bites for rabies, harmful plants, body food, sewage, dust, and vermin. Bacteria, it's in everywhere, most especially in Africa, because of the kind of drainage system we have. You see, in other countries where they have very less rain, they are a little bit safe from bacteria and malaria because they don't even know what that is because they have very less drainage. But when you have those kind of drainage where rain falls steadily for 21 days, then you start having this kind of things. If you live in the urban area, most I uh, will use a place like Anagi Gepens Nema, then years ago, you know, uh, drainage passed through some people parlor to their rooms. Now imagine the kind of odor, the kind of bacteria, the kind of uh, uh, way they feel every blessed day of their life. And some people even have a restaurant. That is where people eat before the government demolish all those places. You can get insect bites. And there are some harmful plants because of people that stay at the urban area that goes to farm every blessed day. They are hunters as well. They have to pass through log distance, you know. They have to create the way by themselves with cutlers. Because after uh, some weeks or months, when people don't pass that part a lot, those weeds start growing back. Those germs start growing back. Let's take this you're on your site or you are on your farm. You already have bruises and cuts. There are some deadly plants that just ensure that they don't touch that wound. You are going to go numb immediately. After some time, you will be free. But there are some plants you don't even want to try. If by mistake they are into your food, then you are on your own. So when we talk of dust, this is where most of Africans, in short, almost more than 90% of Africans apprentices that learn and work or hand trade, or are doing hand trade, get it wrong. During demolition, there are lots of dust, or during chiseling of concrete. And you know, in Africa, getting an electric uh, chisel concrete machine, my concrete chiseling machine, is very, very expensive. So, we do a lot of manual handling. Bye, bye, bye. This is where the dust come out from. For them, they don't use nose mask. They just get a cloth, just wrap it around their head, and boom, the job is done. After they are done, you see their eyes very, very big and red from the dust and inhalation. They start having uh, flow coming out of their morons. We call it kata in uh, Nigeria. We are going to move to the chemical hazard. Chemical hazard are hazardous substance that can cause harm. Um, skin irritation, respiratory problem, uh, blindness. You see, like glaucoma. People who have glaucoma, I hope God provide for you. You can go for the operation and it's going to be successful. Chemical hazards are very deadly for those working in the factory. I once worked in a factory that produced, uh, you know, these plastic bags. Every blessed day, we were never provided with nose mask. But after the process of the machine and everything is going fine, if it's to change, if there is time for changing the filter, we just put on a hand glove, move closer to that machine that is super hot. You know, I'm talking of something above 40 degree, 50 degree. You have to move closer to it. Then you have to turn and bring out the uh, filter from the machine. You change it, then you return the new filter, and you continue. You can imagine the, uh, the odor 
of burnt uh, rubber coming every day and inhaling this every blessed day. But for them, only the people in top management, they get tea, they get green tea, they get uh, some tablets that cleanse the body. But what about the staffs working? And I have people working there for 10, 15 years, 12 years, 8 years. I worked there for only 3 weeks and I resigned. When I see the kind of hazard and risk associated with this job, I have to resign because, believe me, I cannot continue with this. Then when we talk of physical hazard, these are environmental factors that can harm anyone without even touching them. Like I said before, people falling from height, noise, very high decibel of noise, radiation, and pressure. You see, we talked about height already, and I'm going to talk about noise. If you enter Danfo in Nigeria, oh my God. Because it's a, we see it as a normal way of life where uh, the conductor will be at the back, he will put petrol in his mouth, he will put it in the carburetor. <laughs> okay, or guy will start here. Open the engine and you hear noise. But because it's what we do every day, right from when we were young, we see it as a normal way of life. Hello, I want to challenge you. Leave that area you are staying for just one month. Go and live in a very, very silent area. You know, suburb area where it's not very developed. Stay there for one month and go back and take the same bus. That is where you start having tinnitus, ringing of the ear. When you come out of the bus, you start hearing when, 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 when. It's as if the engine is still working in your ear. And short, that is just short time exposure. Now imagine long time exposure. How are people going to look like after 20, 30, 40, 50 years? After you've used all your young age to pass through all this kind of deadly hazard. You see, I once worked at a 7-Up bottling company in Nigeria, Ikeja, for some months, I think. Company provided earplug for everybody, ear defender for everybody. So that when you are working closer to where the machines are, the blower, the labeler, and so on and so forth, you should use the earplug. But you find people taking that earplug and putting it in their pocket. When you tell them, excuse me, sir, can you put on your ear? Hey, I beg you, come on for here. All of them now they speak big, 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 big on you, bo. Wait till you know. I don't they work for here for 12 to 15 years. Nothing they happen. Meaning, who the hell are you? You are just uh, joining us maybe two to three months and you are telling me what to do. You are telling me to use my ear plug. I've been working here for 10, 12 years. There's no problem. I'm going to put it later. Okay, thank you very much. You can go. This is the attitude of people towards you trying to correct them. And these are part of the disadvantage you will get, but we'll talk about that later. Then radiation. My people in North Africa, my people in Kenya, my people in countries where the sun are super hot, man. I can feel your pain. Because I know the level of getting drinking water is very, very low. You have to dig 10, 15, 17, 18, 20 feet before you get drinking water. And God is going to bless you also. I know it has not been easy working under direct sunlight as uh, as a labor, going three, four, five story building with uh, almost five to six kg of uh, mixed cement on your head, going to fill uh, the decking. I mean, no God is going to bless you also. Everyone is trying. But all these things, the risk associated to it, when you finish lifting those kind of load, repetitive action with your head, then you know what's going to happen. So we move to uh, safety hazard, which are sleep and trip. You see, Africans, we all have this bad attitude. When you are in maybe a mall or somewhere very close where you see water on the ground, you just walk by the side, collapse, there you go. Instead of you just to do the right thing, excuse me, I can find uh, there's water 
over here. Can you please call the housekeeping to take care of this? Call us. You are not going to die. Bada bing, bada bing. Hello, I'm talking to you. What will it take you to tell somebody who is climbing that, hey, my friend, come downstairs, use your safety harness, then you can go back up. What will it take you? Nothing. You just tell her, hey, suffer you, may you not go fall from up. What does that mean? Meaning, uh, be careful, don't fall from up. Instead of you to provide something for them. But when you ask these people, they tell you, ah, uh, PP is very expensive. Someone who says education, education is expensive, try ignorance. That is the meaning. If you say PPE is expensive, can you account for how much you've spent on buying tablets from the age of 15 to your present age? Can you? No, no, no. Yeah, hello. I'm talking to you. Yeah. Can you? This is why we have to try as much as possible to eradicate all this kind of culture. It's not a way of life. Now, this channel is here to tackle those weak points we have. Then trip. When you trip on something, lots of time. If you go to mechanic workshop, if you go to welding workshop, if you go to carpentry workshop, you will sleep on lots of things because they are very poor housekeeping. We are going to talk about also in another say, episode. But let's move to agronomics. Agronomics is a result of physical factors that can result in musculoskeletal injury. Ah, my back, my neck, they pay me. Ah, they feel pain here. This is a musculoskeletal injury. Do you know why? Because of poor workstation setup. You know workstation I mean? If you are working in a small office, most especially those of you working in a uh, printing firm, where they do lots of photocopy every day, lots of typing, they give you a stood to sit down. Instead of them to give you a seat that the back is straight like this, so it can help your back, it can help you sit straight. But is either you are like this, or you are like this. These are poor posture that affects the backbone. They are called uh, musculoskeletal injury, which can lead to work-related upper limb disorder. You see? Then we have lots of manual handling. Oh my God. Africa, Aheluna, you are the Ogapata Pata, the general of Asia of manual handling. Hello? You think you are strong? No. Not because you are strong. It's the way of life. When uh, construction is going on and you have lots of bricklayers building a uh, five story, six story building, most of all these people cannot afford an iron scaffold. So what we fall back to, it's a bamboo. You know bamboo stick, right? We always use bamboo stick every time. So many people prepare this bamboo that they did not give chance for stairs of where somebody can move from one place to another. So all they just do is, you put a rope, the load will go up. Or they take uh, cement from the ground, then they throw together with the shovel. Can you do that? You can imagine how Africa. Don't worry, later in another episode, I'm going to be showing you videos. But this is just a general overview of things you are going to be getting from our channel. They take cement with a shovel and throw both the shovel and the cement up. You can imagine how strong these guys are. You see, bricks, block. People take block with their hand long distance. There is no uh, there is no lifting equipment, manual handling equipment machine that can assist them for long range. You see repetitive action. Uh, give me block. Some of us use vibrated block, some of us use brick. If it's brick, they throw brick. You can imagine going down, coming up, going down, coming up. We are talking of 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 bricks. Repetitive action. And you get it, and, ah, my back. How will your back not pay you, my brother? Hey, my neck. How will your neck not pay you? When everything you do is bring mua, 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 give me, give me, give me. You know the funny thing an electrician does? When you're on top of the ladder on the pole, we are life wire. We want to connect uh, the cable of another building to 
the you know the general electric uh, pole to power their house. For many plier fully, meaning fully. Can you please pass me the plier? It's going to throw the fly plier from down. Then woo, you catch it. It will throw screwdriver from down. You catch it. Why don't you just put on a full protective jacket? Put in your pliers, your tester, your cutter, your striper, and so on and so forth. Then when you get up, anything you need, you can do it. This is why most people die of electric shock from high voltage. And even if the electric don't kill them, gra gravity is going to kill them. Because when you are falling from that height, height of about 12 to 13 feet, tell me, how are you going to survive? Because when you are not dead because you receive just very few electric shock, but when you are going down, you cannot hold the ladder anymore. Boom, bada bing, bada bang. You are gone. Hello? I'm talking to you. Cut that bad habit. Yes, you. Cut that bad habit. That's a very, very bad habit. And now we are going to move to psychosocial hazard. Psychosocial hazard a hazard that affects our mental health. This is why I say Africans, we are the we are the top rank in most of these sexual harassment. Hmm? Stress at work. Workplace violence. Peer pressure. Victim of different types of bad accidents. These are the things that really disturb people's brain. You know, it's so bad to the extent that some bosses will take the file and throw it back to either their receptionist or their employee. That is to the level it gets. Is this what I want from you? Because you asked her out and she refused to go out with you. Yes, you, I'm talking to you. Hello, I'm talking to you. Now everything she's been doing ever since is now wrong. Now you start giving her extracurriculum activity just for you to ensure that you suffer because you asked her out and she told you she has another guy or she refused to date you. Go and check. Most companies in Africa, all the uh, managers, all the uh, chief executive officers of that company, all the directors of that company, go and check your blood pressure. It's like this. It's above my head. I'm very, very sure. 110%. You know why? You shout to a lot. You should employ people because of what they can give you. This is why they went to school. They have their own IQ. Don't tell them what to do. You see, this is why Google, this is why Facebook are going to ever continue to be better than all of our uh, company put together. Because when they employ you, they expect you to bring an innovation that they don't know anything about. Why are lots of people in, uh, in the America, uh, United States of uh, America Army, you see lots of hackers. You see uh, the youngest boy, I think he's 17 years, that detected a new planet. This, you have your equipment, fine. Who gives a shit about your equipment? Why did you employ me? You employ me to come and use your equipment the best way I can. And believe me, the easiest way to finish a job is to give a lazy man a job. A lazy man does not want to work. But he knows this. He does not want to work. So he's going to look for the easiest way to finish that job. If the job is about to take two, three hours, he knows how he's going to use shortcuts, shortcuts, shortcuts. And boom, your job is ready under 30 seconds. But you tell him, ha, ah, I'm not going to pay you this much. Why will you charge me that much? You are not, he's not charging you for that 30 seconds he worked. He's charging you for the 10 to 15 years he has been practicing to become perfect, to be able to execute that job in 30 seconds. Now you understand why it seems as if most Africans are very lousy or they are very, very, uh, you feel they are very, Hush. No. This is how we uh, this is how we grew up. This is what we face in companies. Because when your boss shouts at you every day, every day, every day, you grow tired of this. And you don't expect such a thing to happen again when you join another organization. You wait two, three, four months before you pay the salary. How do you expect him to think straight? He has plans already how he's going to buy his clothes, how he's going to pay his children's school fees, house rent, uh, how he's going to uh, service his car. 
But at the end of the month, no salary. Somebody is sitting down on the salary. Tell me how psychologically you are not going to uh, be affected. And you expect me, I've not eaten. They say an angry man is an angry man. You know I've not eaten, and you are telling me to come and write one to one hundred. If I write one to ten, Abibi, just be lucky. Because the worst test thing that could happen to a man is to know that even he has not eaten, his family should not starve. So if anyone work for you, please pay his or her salary. Please. I'm talking to you here, CSO, CEO, manager, directors, staff appraiser, except some very, very big company that had some, you know, British management that understand how life works. We do staff appraiser, give them bonuses at the end of the month. All they just tell you is, hey, eh, my brother, you shall be work. You, shall be, you are born for this work. Come here, I buy you two bottles. That two bottles that you are buying him at the bar, it's enough recommendation. Be you know, staff will be happy to work for you. There's difference between I'm working for you and I'm happy to work for you. I'm working for you is just to make ends meet. Just pay me my salary and let me go. And I'm happy to work for you is even if I get another job offer with higher salary. But because you give me chance to go to attend my children PTA meeting, to attend my children excursion, to attend my uh, child education, to attend my wedding anniversary. If I want to go out, you don't tell me not to go. All you just tell me is, make sure you finish your work. If you finish early, you can go early. I would be happy to work for you, no matter the salary, because I know I'm not going to get this kind of things. I will be able to adhere to any rules and regulation provided by the organization. So, you are going to go to the advantages of health and safety that favors HS representative. You know, during a contract completion, you get an award, you will be so happy, there's no lost time injury, you'll be talk of the company. Your picture will be on the board. They tell you, hey, Botachai, means, uh, in Hindi, means good job. I say, Abibi, good, good, good. This are the advantage. What you love most about, you get lots of certification. The amount of man hour that you achieved without lost time injury. Man hour means the amount of hours people work every very every day, and lost time injury is if there's an incident that warrants everyone to vacate that site for one or two days or even one month or more than that's lost time. But if none of those happen, only bruises and cuts, what um, the first aider can take care of. They just put some penicillin, add some celluloplast or some bandage, put you to rest for two or three days, then you come back to work. So if there's no lost time injury, oh my God, your company will be happy to present you. If there's a next contract, you'll be in. We have very nice HSC department where they take everything really, really serious. For the past five or six, ten years we've been working, we've achieved over 1 million uh, man hour. Even governments do give uh, awards for achieving those kind of milestone in uh, a construction site. You execute big projects without anybody dying. People, family come to work safely and they go, you ensure that they go back home safely. These are the things. And you know, you get increase in wages. If you tell them, okay, I'd like you to change my car, they will be happy to change your car because the company gains a lot. You can imagine how much you save them from sending people to the hospital, paying the direct and indirect cost associated with any incident, like civil claim for the injured uh, personnel, and so on and so forth, which we are going to be covering in another episode of Africa HSC uh, channel. You see, all these are the advantage, the sweetness. If you put everything in place, believe me, the easiest job on earth is a safety job. You just sit down in your office, all you just do is, uh, we are having a new guy, or we are having 10 new guys joining us today. Okay, send them for induction. Ah, my friend, uh, these are the rules of the site. You don't smoke on site, you don't urinate on site, you don't defecate on site. 
Now you see, it's very easy. If you are about to work, you have to put on your PPE uh, every time. You have to go up with your harness. You have to, you see, you give them the rules. This is going to be your job. You update your system. At the end of the day, you are happy to work. There's a positive culture that you set that is going on fine. But now, before we go to the final stage of today's episode, I want you all to please comment below how you lost any of your loved ones due to occupational incident or accident. I will be very, very happy. And please, if you like everything we've been talking about, you give us a thumb up. You understand me? And if you still don't like it, give us thumb down, but at least you are participating. And please ensure you tell us the reason why you give us a thumb down. So, when else you are making a video, we are going to improve on those places that, uh, that are not up to standard. Now, we are going to the disadvantages of occupational health and safety, but it still favors the HSC representative. Everyone will hate you, my friend. Everyone. At home, at work, between your friends. Because all they will see, because they don't understand your point of view, is you are too harsh. In short, you are prone to face lots of violence. Some people want to beat you up because they don't want to use the harness. And you are telling them, because it's above 1.8 meter or 6 feet, you have to use your harness. Then they tell you, Habibi, before you came here, everything is going fine. They don't realize that your job is to ensure they come to work safely and they go back to their family safely. They don't understand that. Only you knows that. And this will allow you to develop mood swing. So you have to be completely patient, my friend. You have to be super patient. Because the same person you told, Habibi, put on your helmet and your harness when you are going up, he tell you, okay, because you are there. Immediately you leave again, he will remove it. Some people will put their harness, they only put the hand, they don't buckle the waist, they don't buckle here. Because it's here, immediately you are trying to, you know, save yourself and your hands come up the hands is just going to pull out boom colors bada bang bada bang boss if you are lucky you make it to the hospital the next time you won't do it again that is when you remember ah and this guy told me about this but i always think it's ash you've seen on most construction sites crane overturn load falling from heights lots of people get injured whose fault is it it's going to be the health and safety representative. When the police come for investigation on the municipality in charge of uh, health and safety for that uh, state or the country. Because as a safety officer, you are supposed to understand that the crane has to be on a level ground. You have to understand the swing radius. You have to understand the maximum load capacity this crane can lift. You have to check the maintenance, which is not supposed to be more than six months old of this crane you see before the job starts you have to check on the screen if there's any hazard warning that there's a problem with this uh crane because sometimes crane might overheat you see anti two block they call it anti two block it's between the boom and uh the boom extension and the uh, pulley which no matter how much you pull the gear up it's not going to allow the rope, the wire rope to go to the top, you know, to the end. When it touches that anti two block, it's going to stop. You have to understand the weather condition as well to know if the uh, current of the wind is too high or too low or it's normal, it can't be too low. But if the wind current is too high, you have to tell everybody to stop their work. Some project manager are ready to give you any amount, just let the work go. Don't stop anybody from doing their work because they have a target to meet. But they forget that if you are not doing your job and somebody gets injured, that rushing they were rushing, if somebody should die, they have to close down the site. And if you join an organization where negative culture has been there for a long time, believe me, every day you will get a headache. You will always be at the top of your voice with the way you are shouting, with the intensity of how much you are shouting. 
because you will find lots of people, and this happens in plants area, you know, like uh, a precast plant where the cutting machine is so loud when it's cutting through the precast panel. But you find the operator not using his ear earplug. Imagine, you find the guys adding water to the blade so it won't overheat, not using earplug. You find them not using nose mask. You find the welder coupling, putting together the uh, skeleton of the precast. You find them welding without glasses. You find them not putting their hard hat on. You find uh, most of them used to put on their safety boots. But you see, if this has been the culture, the culture of just, I just want to finish this job, then tell me how you are going to change it. It will be very, very hard. Unless you have a very supportive manager, that is when it will be easier for you to turn. But if the manager is the same as them, there is one problem that say if you can't beat them, join them. But for me, I'm not going to join them. I prefer, I rather resign. So they will know I'm very serious with my job. And those of us that are seen HSE departments as a part of the organization that does not give profit, that does not give uh, contribute anything to the organization. I hope I'm able to convince you, not confuse you, that we are saving you a lot. At least we still try as much as possible to secure you, to ensure that you go back to your family every day. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a lovely day ahead. Thank you very much for your time for watching this. And if you would like us to continue with this and know more about HSE and everything we discussed earlier, click the like button, subscribe on our channel, and hit the notification button. So anytime we are going to post, they are going to inform you. Let's make Africa great once more. And thank you very much. See ya. Catch ya. Bye.